Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Monday, September the 23rd. Rainy day out. Good thing I had the meetup on Saturday when I did because it feels like it's been raining ever since then. Anyways, uh, so some, some discussions of numbers from last night. We'll start with the Flyers game from last night. Uh, Brink had two goals, so that's good. Bobby Brink looking to take that next step this year. Uh, Farabee had a goal and three assists in that game. Farabee's capable of more points than what he had last season. Uh, Morgan Frost, two goals and one assist. So these are really good numbers. Uh, two assists as well for Michkov and Luchenko. So Luchenko, of course, some an eyebrow-raising pick. We'll put it that way when the Flyers picked him in the first round, but they believe in his strength and his speed and everything. And so far in this preseason, it looks pretty good. They won that game 6-2 to two against the Washington Capitals. So, yeah, uh, sadly, though, there was no audio, so I, I couldn't really couldn't really watch it. And then the feed disappeared, so, all right, cool. Anyways, uh, the Flyers win that game, and so there's some encouraging statistics. We'll keep an eye on it. Again, it's just preseason, but it's fun to look at. Stamkos had a goal last night in a 6-2 to two loss against Florida for Nashville. Of course, Nashville and Florida playing the split squad game. Uh, Stamkos is going to be one to keep an eye on, I think, early on in the season especially, see how he adjusts to being with a new team for the first time in his career and, you know, what it's going to do to his stats. Do we see 40 goals from him this year? Is it more around 30 that we see? Uh, I don't think it'll be anything below 30. You never know. Brand new team. You just never know. Uh, Adam Boquist. So the Florida Panthers, and of course I'm wearing the Florida Panthers Stanley Cup champions hat because... I've been told I just, oh, he hates Florida. I, I do because I got the Stanley Cup champions hat. Anyways, Boquist had a goal and an assist last night. So they did lose some defensemen in the offseason, but Boquist, one of those guys they picked up. And if I've learned anything with Florida over the years, it's they know exactly who to pick up and when. Forsling's a really good example. So in that 6-2 to two win against Nashville, Boquist had a goal and an assist for Florida. And again, he's one to keep an eye on for them early in the season. Uh, last night for the Oilers, Cam Deneen scores an overtime winner. The assists on that goal coming from Pod Colson and Savoy. So uh, Matt Savoy on the on the board there with an assist. And uh, Pod Colson, of course, coming over from Vancouver with an assist. Uh, keep in mind that he is not um, waivers exempt. He'd have to pass through waivers. So he very like he's very, very likely to make it onto the Oilers roster. He'd have to have a terrible uh, preseason in order not to make it. And, uh, yeah, it's nice to see him on the score sheet. Uh, Darnell Nurse, who has not played yet this preseason and may not play this preseason, uh, is confident that he'll be healthy for the season opener. So uh, Darnell Nurse, I, I think, is is a good top four defenseman. We can discuss his contract at another, another time. But uh, Nurse being healthy should be a positive for the Edmonton Oilers once we reach the start of the season. Uh, again, from last night's games, first off, Utah's first official Utah goal is an own goal, although it's preseason, so it gets forgotten about right away. Uh, but Logan Cooley had a goal and an assist last night for Utah in the 5-3 to three win over the Blues. So even though they put one into their own net, they still won the game 5-3. to three. So I guess they kind of won 5-2. to two. Anyways, um, Utah with the win, and tonight they're playing against L.A., uh, Logan Cooley's one of those really good young forwards to keep an eye on for Utah. But Gunther had, had a goal last night too. And so, yeah, I, I think they're going to be a good team. I think they're going to surprise some people. Uh, Celebrini scored last night in a 4-2 to two loss against Vegas for San Jose. And I think this is kind of how this season's going to go for some of these teams. You're going to have the good young players getting on the board and getting some points. And so fans will have that, that anticipation for what the future's going to look like. Well, the present... Probably going to involve a bunch of losing if if it's San Jose we're talking about here. Uh, Aaron Dell was also cut from his professional tryout. So we've seen some tryouts uh, ended already. Uh, Dylan Ferguson's was ended by the Canucks yesterday, as a for instance. And uh, it makes some sense. Now, there are some teams that are going to be carrying a ton of players because of things like split squad games and just wanting to protect their veterans. But look for major cuts coming out over the next, yeah, about a week. And then we'll get a better idea for what these rosters are going to look like. Uh, Montreal going into the game tonight against the Flyers. Kirby Doc and Patrick Laine are going to be in the lineup. Doc will be, of course, returning after missing a lot of last season with injury. Almost the entire season with an injury. And uh, Laine, of course, putting on Montreal's jersey and playing in a game for them for the first time. Which, again, gets wiped out in like a week's time. When the preseason's all done, and then we talk about their debut, 
once we get to the regular season. So <clears throat> this should be an interesting uh, look. Uh, I believe these two are playing with New Hook tonight. So uh, that should be a fascinating line. And if Montreal can have two scoring lines this year, uh, th they could surprise some people too. Uh, it is. I, I think the Atlantic division is the most difficult division right now. I think the toughest division from top to bottom is the Atlantic, but we'll see when the games get started just how accurate that is. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, I think we saw this coming when D'Angelo didn't sign a contract by, I'd say, like August 1st. Uh, he has signed a one-year deal uh, with SKA St. Petersburg in the KHL. Uh, D'Angelo, just the the when he's scoring points and the defense isn't that egregiously bad, he's worth having in the lineup, but... He had a rough year. And defensively, he has never been a stellar defenseman. He has always been an offensively-minded defenseman. He he had enough offense to get drafted in the first round his uh, in his draft year. But even then, there were some discussions about his personality. There were discussions about his defense. And so that's, that's where we end up with him going over to the KHL for a year. We'll see if he comes back next year. Uh, but he, he made some good money in the NHL, and now he heads overseas. So coming back to Philadelphia, and I, I wanted this to be on its own. Um, Johnny Goudreau's dad. Now, he's American, so I assume it's Guy Goudreau. Could be Guy. It doesn't matter. It's Guy Goudreau is my guess. But uh, John Tortorella invited him to practice, and he did come to practice. Apparently, he, him and Hod and thought about it. John Tortorella's a good guy. And I, I know there are people who don't like John Tortorella as a coach, I know there's people who still think that he's the one that yells and screams all the time. I, I saw an article the other day about, oh, is, is Tortorella too hard on his players? And I'm thinking, he's nowhere near as hard on his players as he was 20 years ago. Like, this is a different coach. But the the fact that he phoned uh, Johnny and Matthew's father and said, hey, you want to come out to practice, um, that's fantastic. I am sure that man is dealing with a, a lot of uh, heartache and a lot of stress and getting out on the ice and being around hockey players. I'm sure it's bittersweet for him right now, but Tortorella also says he wants him to come back for other practices. Uh, for the record, Goudreau's father has been a head coach for hockey. He has been an assistant coach around hockey too. He knows the sport. So <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see if the Flyers maybe keep him around for a little while and, and just, you know, I, I don't think there's any harm in this. And uh, I, I think it's a great move by John Tortorella. So I, I've been a fan of Tortorella's since he left Vancouver. In Vancouver, I was less of a fan. But since he left Vancouver, uh, I think he had a good run in Columbus, for instance. And now uh, he is, I think, a good coach for the Flyers who gets more wins out of him than other coaches might. And I, I, don't, I just don't think he's as hard on players as he used to be. He's just honest with the press, which throws everybody off. All right, uh, Igor Shesterkin. So if you're a Rangers fan, odds are you may be concerned. Now, the question mark with Shesterkin all summer, I had to I had to break up something. The rabbits were knocking stuff around. Uh, but the, the speculation with Shesterkin has been around, of course, his contract and his extension for next year because he's a UFA this coming summer, even though it feels like he's, he's younger than he is. He's 28 years of age. Uh, but contract talks likely stop when the regular season starts. So he wants to get the contract done. If it's not done by the start of the regular season, then it's not done. And so we go into the regular season with that hanging over our heads. Now, the word still is that it's a $12 million value he's looking for with his contract and that he's not interested in giving a hometown discount uh, for the team that's making him the offer right now, which would be the New York Rangers. So this is a difficult a, a difficult decision for a team putting $12 million into a goaltender, even if it is the best goaltender in the league. So let's just assume that Igor is the best goalie in the league. It's a lot of money to spend for a goaltender on your cap. Uh, even with the cap going up, that is a lot. And so we'll see what he ends up getting. And again, because he's asking for 12, he'll probably end up in that 10, 10 and a half million dollar range. But if they don't get that contract signed, they're in a really tough position. They're not going to move him at the deadline if they don't have a contract, unless the Rangers end up outside of a playoff spot and don't look like they're going to make it. But uh, at this point in time, I think it's in their best interest to get that contract done and get it done as soon as possible. Just look over at Boston and the Jeremy Swayman situation and realize that's an RFA. Igor's a UFA. It could be worse. So we'll see what happens there and what the cap hit ends up looking like for Igor Shesterkin. 
Uh, today is also launch day for the Amazon Prime NHL, uh, the basically Amazon Prime Monday Night Hockey. Gary Bettman there at the launch and talking about how important hockey is in Canada and all this. And I'm thinking, is he trolling? Like when he says this stuff, I know he means it. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, is he trolling? Does he, he's got to be checking the internet. Like I'm sure he checks, uh, you know, what people are saying about him. And he, he knows he gets booed everywhere he goes. So at any rate, um, he's at the launch of the Amazon Prime Monday Night Hockey, which I hope does well. And the reason I'd like to see it do well is because I think the NHL not scheduling games on Monday, because and I think it's a Monday Night Football thing, I've never really understood. I don't know how much, how much crossover there is between sports when it comes to the National Hockey League. And so I don't think scheduling more games on Monday would necessarily be a bad thing. That being said, uh, I remember when I was a kid watching hockey and Mondays very often were just days off from, from hockey. So at any rate, uh, we'll see how the Monday night hockey does on Amazon Prime. Uh, there are Canadian teams that are going to be affected by all this. So uh, not every game is going to be available via cable and we'll see how it does. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.